Thank you so much for joining me in this video. So for my 31st birthday, Jordan actually surprised me with a trip to New Orleans. Neither one of us had been before and uh, it's been on our bucket list of places to go, especially here in the United States. So I was super excited when I found out. It was such a fun trip. It was unlike any place I'd ever been before. Uh, the culture was so diverse. It was so lively there. Like it just honestly felt like there was always something going on. And I love that because it's like very different from like everyday regular life. So I found out we were going to New Orleans the day before we were supposed to leave. And as soon as I found out, I hopped on my computer, did a bunch of research um, into like places to go, places to eat, because I really wanted to check out the best places that New Orleans has to offer in the short amount of time that we were going to be there. So after hours and hours of research, I compiled a list and I used that list for our trip to try to plan out all of the things that we we're supposed to do. I'm hoping that by sharing this list with you guys and sharing our experience and our itinerary with you guys, it may help you with your trip if you are planning a trip to New Orleans yourself. Okay, so first let's talk about where to stay. We stayed at the Royal Sinesta, which is on Bourbon Street. It was a great location. I loved it because it was so centrally located. We were within a 20 to 25 minute walking distance of pretty much anywhere in the French quarters and I love that. I love not having to call a car and I love just being able to walk around and uh, not have to worry about driving or like parking or anything like that. So because the French Quarters is pretty much what New Orleans is like known for, I think that's a great location to stay. There's honestly like a bar, a restaurant, like shops, like everywhere in the French Quarters, no matter what street you're on, honestly. Bourbon is great because you can literally, uh, for us at least, we could go downstairs, walk out of our hotel and you're like literally in the middle of like the party scene. One thing to note is it is legal to carry drinks around on the streets in New Orleans, which is uh, what makes it so much fun. We're not limited to just a few bars for one night. You literally can see so much because you're able to carry your drink with you. And I feel like that kind of saves a little bit of money also <laughs> because we're not getting as many drinks at as many bars. There are a few cons though with staying on Bourbon Street and the most important one is the noise. Um, it gets very, very loud on Bourbon, as you can imagine, with all of the people and the crowds on Bourbon Street. So if you're a light sleeper, that might be your problem. We were lucky enough to get a room on a side street. So we were like half a block away from Bourbon Street and that actually helped the noise a little bit. So although we could hear a little bit of like the craziness going on, we were far enough from the main streets that it wasn't like terrible. So if you do want to stay on Bourbon, maybe consider like staying on a side street or like getting your room that's not on Bourbon itself unless you want to like be a part of all that. So I think that the best way to share my recommendations of things to do in New Orleans is to pretty much share with you guys our itinerary and everything that we did in New Orleans. I think we did a pretty good job of getting through most of my list. Now there were a few items that we weren't able to get to, um, so I'm going to include the full list of everything that I came up with before the trip in the description below if you're curious. I'm also going to go into more details about restaurants and things to get at those restaurants in the description, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. All right, so let's go ahead and just get into our trip and then I'll talk about the things we experienced and our thoughts on them uh, as I talk. So we got into New Orleans Friday night and ended up leaving Monday morning. And that's because we just drove to New Orleans. We live in Austin, Texas, so it's supposed to be like an eight and a half hour drive for us. It ended up taking more than 10 hours, like 10 to 11 hours for us to get there. So we got in a lot later than we had anticipated. We were pretty hungry at this point, so we ended up stopping my Acme Oyster House um, because that was one of the top items I wanted to check off my list was to check out charboiled oysters. So when I did my research, there were two places that were recommended to get charboiled oysters and Acme Oyster House was one of the first ones to come up. Now with Acme Oyster House, they don't take reservations. So a lot of times there will be a line to get into 
the restaurants to sit down and eat. Luckily when we went, because it was so late, there wasn't really that long of a line. But if you go like during dinner time or maybe like during lunch time, just anticipate a little bit of a wait. So day two of our trip, which is the first full day of our trip, I would say try to wake up early and get to Cafe du Monde. Okay, let's just pause it right here. I know it's Cafe du Monde. I don't know why I kept pronouncing it wrong, but please just bear with me. Before 8.30, if Cafe de Moon is something that is on your list. I would highly suggest going before 8.30 because after 9, that's like when the crowd gets there for breakfast and the line gets ridiculously long. So from our hotel, which is the Royal Sinesta, it was about like a 10, 15 minute walk to get to um, Cafe de Moon. And honestly, that was not bad at all. It was actually really nice outside. If you're going like in the middle of summer and it's like super hot, you probably don't want to walk around that much. When we went, it was a really good time to walk around. And it was really nice to kind of just take in everything, take in the atmosphere, the vibes as we're walking. They also have rail cars that you can take also, but from where we were, you'd have to like walk to the rail car, get on the rail car, and then like take it just a couple minutes. And within that couple minutes, you could walk like 10 minutes to get to that location. So we decided to walk instead. So when I did my research, I would say Cafe de Moon was probably the most recommended, most popular spot in in New Orleans. So if you go, definitely check it out because everyone raves about it. The cafe au lait there is delicious. I can see why people rave about it. The coffee just has such a delicious like fragrance and aroma. It was so good and the beignets are amazing. Now there is another cafe that offers coffee and beignets as well and that is cafe beignet which is actually right across the street from our hotel unfortunately we weren't able to go there and get beignets but i did get a cafe au lait to go one of the days and to be honest i like cafe du moon a little bit better like the coffee there was just so much more fragrant it was like delicious one thing to note is cafe beignet is open pretty late and it is on bourbon so you can actually go there and they have like live jazz shows at night and they have a bar also so you can get like bar drinks we actually ended up hitting cafe beignet for drinks the night we got there because it was like so close to our, our hotel and it was like one of the only places where it was a little bit on the chiller side and it was so fun. I honestly really enjoyed the atmosphere of Cafe Beignet at night with like the live jazz and everything. Okay, so sorry I got sidetracked, but let's go back to our itinerary for day number two. When you walk down to Cafe de Moon, if you go a little bit further, you're gonna hit the French market. This is another place that's really fun to go see. It's almost kind of like their farmer's market vibe. Now, the French market is actually really fun and I definitely recommend going there because there are a lot of food and other vendors. So it's just a fun place to kind of go and check out. Out. If you're hungry, get food there. It looked delicious. I wish we would have had time to eat there. And then there's also a bunch of vendors selling like crafts and other items as well. Um, if you want to get like souvenirs from the trip. So the reason we didn't get any food at the French market is because we were saving our stomach for a muffaletta from Central Groceries. Now Central Groceries is the home of the original muffaletta. They created the muffaletta and they're so famous that you can actually order it online and have it shipped to you overnight um, because people like crave it that badly and they're like paying like a hundred dollars for like two muffalettas so we wanted to go and check it out because so many people rave about it and a muffaletta is pretty much just like a cold cut sandwich on muffaletta bread there's a bunch of cold cut deli meats on there with like this olive salad that they make in-house oh my goodness it's just so delicious it's nice because it's a cold cut so you can like bring it back to your hotel with new orleans you're drinking a lot so having a cold cut sandwich ready to go is really nice definitely if you're in new orleans get a muffaletta from central grocery this is like a top on my list so pretty much what we did was we went down on one side of the street down to french market we circled around on the other side of the street uh, stop by central groceries now if you leave central groceries and you go to the right you're gonna be heading back to the main area again uh, and along the way is Jackson Square now Jackson Square is a destination to visit also especially since you're already in that area they have a lot of street performers and like artists and everything out there so it's actually a really fun place to stop and just people watch there are a ton of performers and it was just like a lot of fun to watch because you know they are entertainers however I would say because of that like make sure you have a few dollars on you like some cash on you so that you can tip the performers 
um, if you do stop to either take pictures, take videos, or to watch them. Jackson Square itself was really beautiful. It's like this little park. As soon as you walk into like the park, the church is literally the central like backdrop of it. And then as we were walking to the back, there was like another street performance in the back. That was the one where people jumped over other people. I don't know, but it was a lot of fun. So definitely stop there if you have time to kill, if it's a beautiful day out, like that is a really fun area very lively also during the day without having to drink any alcohol. <laughs> So after that, we walked towards the back of Jackson Squared and kind of walked up this like street. And along the way, we came across Pat O'Brien's. Now, Pat O'Brien's is fun because they are actually the home of the Hurricane, which is like the super like strong sugary drink, but it's delicious, especially at Pat O'Brien's because I feel like it's not as sweet and it's more like authentic than at other places in New Orleans. I really like Pat O'Brien's because they have this beautiful courtyard in the back that you can go, especially during the day, and just kind of grab a drink, sit down, and just enjoy yourself. So after that, we went back to our hotel room to take a little bit of a break because we had been up uh, walking around for the past few hours. We stopped at the pool at our hotel just to kind of lounge around and just unwind a little bit and it was really pretty. So we actually ended up doing a ghost tour that night at like 6 p.m. which ended up working out perfectly. Now there are a lot of ghost tours in New Orleans because New Orleans is known for like their ghosts. It's such an old city. Honestly, both Jordan and I weren't really too big into like spirits and ghosts and stuff. However, we wanted to go on to the ghost tour because we heard it was a great way to get to know the history of New Orleans. So because our tour got done around 8 o'clock, we went to Mr. B's for dinner around like 8.30. Mr. B's is a very popular spot. Try to make reservations if possible. Luckily, because we were eating a little bit later, there wasn't really a, a wait. So we just walked in, there is a dress code. So if you plan on going there to eat, just make sure that you are dressed appropriately. The food at Mr. B's though is so, so delicious. I think their most famous dish is their barbecue shrimp and that was what I got and it was phenomenal. They also have good gumbo, like their gumbo yaya is supposed to be really good. Their crab cakes are supposed to be really good. Overall, everything that we got at Mr. B's was delicious. It is a little bit on the pricier side. It's a little bit more of a high-end restaurant, but it was totally worth it and I highly recommend Mr. B's to go eat because it was just so delicious. I want to go back just for the barbecue shrimp. Ugh. So after Mr. B's, of course, we just walked around Bourbon Street again, just kind of walked around the French quarters. Uh, we stopped by Hotel Monte Leon to check out their carousel bar, which is supposed to be like really popular also. But when we got there, because it was so late, it was like packed. If you want to go check out the carousel bar, I would say maybe go earlier in the evening so that it's not super packed. But it looked really fun. The Monte Leon is like beautiful. However, it's supposed to be really haunted. So if you do stay there, just, just keep that in mind. Another bar to consider going to close to Bourbon or on Bourbon Street is called like Old Absinthe House or something like that. They specialize in absinthe, which is like very unique because there aren't very many absinthe bars that I've been to. Um, and just the way that they pour these drinks, the way that they make them is so unique and so fun. If you're not a huge fan of licorice, it might not be the thing for you, but I think it's a really fun experience. All right, so on Sunday, which was the second full day that we were there for, uh, we ended up waking up a little bit later because we'd been drinking, we you know had a late night the night before. If we would have woken up a little bit earlier, I would have definitely checked out the beignets at Cafe Beignet, but because we went a little bit late, we didn't get to check that out. So I ended up just picking up a coffee instead at Cafe Beignet. However, for lunch, we walked to Drago's, which is around like 15, 20 minutes away from our hotel. It's not in the French quarters itself, it's a little bit off of it, but still within walking distance. And Drago's is another place that was highly recommended for the charbroiled oysters. Um, I would say the difference between the charbroiled oysters at Drago's and the charbroiled oysters at Acme Oyster House is that Drago's has more of like a roux in it, whereas Acme Oyster House has just like cheese on top of their oysters. So after lunch, we ended up doing a swamp tour with Cajun Encounters. This is another thing that I would highly, highly, highly recommend doing, especially during the day when you're trying to kill time or trying to figure out like things to do to get to see New Orleans. 
It was so much fun. I would recommend going with a larger group tour. It's cheaper and it's a little bit more fun because you have more like interaction with the people on your tour. Personally, I think the tour guides are really, really good at their jobs. They're super knowledgeable and they're entertaining. What you call an alligator with a GPS? <laughs> A navigator. <laughs> <laughs> they do a really good job of trying to find new wildlife to see and also to give you a tour of like the bayou itself so you can see what life is like on the bayou. There are actually people who live right on the water. From what I learned from the tour guide, he said that the best time to go if you really want to see wildlife is during like spring and summer. But spring is like the best time because that's when everything comes back to life. But because it was a little bit cooler when we went, we didn't really see as much. We did get to see like a a feral pig though so it was just kind of like a hog uh, and that was really neat it was really cute we saw one alligator in its like resting dormant stage where it was like barely above the water just trying to soak up the sun so after the swamp tour we went back to our hotel and got ready for dinner we went to commander's palace which is supposed to be like award-winning it is like one of the most famous restaurants in new orleans and where we were told time and time again to go it is a little bit nicer of a restaurant there is a dress code for it and I would say it even has like a nicer feel than Mr. B's. It's in the garden district, so we had to take an Uber to get there. But everything that we got was so, so good. And you really can't get anything like that anywhere else. The so highlight was their dessert, which is like this bread pudding souffle. And they pour this alcohol cream sauce on top. Oh my goodness, it was probably one of the best desserts I've ever had. So after dinner at this point, we were exhausted because we'd been in New Orleans for like two and a half days. Um, we ended up calling it a night. However, if we would have had a little bit more energy, this would have been a good time to check out Frenchman Street. It's supposed to be where the locals go. So it's not as crazy as Bourbon Street. It has more of like a like jazz laid back vibe but it's also supposed to be like a really fun street to visit also. If you do get a chance to go check out Frenchman Street, I was told to end your night with a gator dog from That Dog, which is like this hot dog place that also has really good french fries. And they're open late, but apparently it's supposed to be like delicious. So if you do go to Frenchman Street, end your night with that. I wish we would have had a chance to try it, but we will for sure next time. So that was pretty much the end of our trip. We didn't get a chance to try everything on my list that I put together, but we hit most of it and I was pretty happy with what we were able to get in the short amount of time that we were there. Some of the things that I wish we would have gotten to or I want to try next time is to go to a jazz show at the Preservation Hall. It's supposed to be really, really fun and a really great show to watch. From my understanding, you can't really get tickets for it. It's like first come, first serve, so you actually have to go and get in line. Another thing that um, you could do during the day is to tour the homes in the Garden District. Apparently these homes are like super, super nice. A lot of celebrities live in the Garden District, so just to kind of give you an idea of just how nice the homes are. Or you can also do a plantation tour. This was something that was on our list also, but you know, there were other things that we wanted to do instead during the day. So even though we hit most of the restaurants I wanted to try during this trip, there were a few restaurants we weren't able to get to. Some of those are Willie's Maze, which is a James Beard award-winning uh, restaurant known for their fried chicken and southern food. It's supposed to have like, some of the best fried chicken like in the world, so I really want to go and try that next time. Um, some other restaurants that our tour guide actually recommended is Jack's Emo's, Pascal Minnelli, and Coterie. All three of those restaurants were really highly recommended by our Swamp tour guide, and I feel like, you know, he's a local, he's eaten there, like all his life like it's got to be pretty good for a local to recommend them so those restaurants are definitely on our list for next time we go another one is Antoine's which is supposed to be the oldest restaurant in New Orleans it sounds like people go to Antoine's mostly for like the decor the atmosphere um, I don't know how their food is it's kind of gotten mixed reviews online so yeah that is pretty much it for the restaurants and pretty much everything to do I'll have the full list again down in the description below so you guys can check that out if you're interested so after our wonderful wonderful trip to New Orleans I do have a few tips uh, if you plan on going to New Orleans yourself the first one is to bring some cash with you there are some bars that do not take card also there are a lot of street performers or a lot of like services that you can get such as like tours and stuff where you want to like tip people and so cash is really nice to have on hand for that 
However, when I was talking to Jordan about this list, he also told me that a lot of the street performers take Venmo, so maybe cash is not that necessary. So tip number two I have is the bigger the drinks, the more sugar it's going to have. So when you're on Bourbon Street, you're gonna see a ton of huge drinks, like the hand grenades, the frozen drinks, and like the hurricanes. They just have a ton of sugar in them, so that's something to think about because more sugar means more of a hangover the next day. Also, uh, I think a lot of those drinks have Everclear in them. They just try to get you the strongest drink possible, like for the cheapest price. So that's something to kind of keep in mind also. So these drinks are not only sugary, but they can be really, really strong as well. So just be careful when you're out there drinking. Which leads me to my number one tip if you go to New Orleans is to get a case of water before you go to your hotel or like stop at a convenience store on the way to your hotel and get a case of water because they do not provide you with bottled water in your hotel, or at least ours didn't, and they're charging $7 for the bottled water in the room. For half of that price, you can get like a whole case of water that will last you the entire trip, and that's what we did, and we found that so helpful. That water helped us so much on our trip. Whew. Okay, so that is pretty much it for our trip to New Orleans and my recommendations of where to go and what to eat if you go to New Orleans. Again, all of these spots are pretty touristy. These are kind of like the top recommended spots that people suggest when they go to New Orleans. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or any suggestions in the comment section below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to click on the subscribe button right there and hit that bell notification so you can see more videos like this. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.